Hi Queens, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. It is Sunday, it is 2.40 and I just finished a haul um, for my channel. Um, I did a J Lux label haul today. I got a couple of pieces last week and I wanted to try them on. We'll see how that goes. If you want to check that haul, I will link it in the description box below. And I also wanted to update you on something else. While I was getting ready for my haul, my clothing haul, I was speaking with uh, you guys and I was telling you how I created two more Instagram accounts. One is for food and one is for my style. So check those uh, accounts out. I will also link them in the description below so that you can check them out later at your leisure. But thank you for your support. I've seen so many, so many people have called me. I mean, I know I don't have a lot of comments in my YouTube videos, which is fine, you know, but you know, I have gotten a lot of phone calls and text messages and people that I, that I know are watching my videos, you know, they're like jazz, you know, they're really nice, you know, they are improving. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much for your feedback. And I also wanted to do another you know, check in with you, a separate check in with you today because, you know, today is Sunday and I have, you know, a little bit more time today to film. So today I wanted to talk about how hard it is to move on after a breakup. And obviously, everything that I share with you on this channel is solely, solely my opinion, solely my experiences. Um, I am not in any way shape or form going to use language or experiences uh, from someone else because that's just not being authentic right let's talk about breakups first of all you know so this gentleman approached me about I want to say maybe a week ago um, is someone who I see often you know in my transit to work and so he asked me on a date and I respectfully declined and so he asked me, you know, if I was involved. And I said, no, I'm not involved. I'm just, I'm just not, you know, interested in anything right now. I mean, you know, I don't have an issue. And I'm really open about meeting friends, new people, and creating friendships. And, you know, having a good time, a safe time. But I'm just honestly not looking for anyone right now. Right now, I'm really honestly just focusing on myself. And so he said to me, you know... Well, you know, I, I respect that, you know, I just, you know, I thought that, you know, you maybe you and I can go out for, for dinner sometime. And I said again, I don't have an issue with going to dinner as long as you know that there's nothing, that I'm just not looking for anything serious. So he was like, okay, you know, I'll give you a call. And, and I'm not expecting him to call. I mean, you know, he's a nice looking man and everything, but I'm not looking for him to call me. And honestly, I don't really care if he does it, right? Because I'm really content with where I am right now. So I started thinking about, you know, breakups, right? When he asked me, oh, well, how long you been, you know, single? And I said, for a while, you know, I've been single for a little over a year now. And I'm going to be honest with you. I just, I love it. I don't know. Maybe I'm just, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't even know what to say. But I, I'm loving being alone. Not because I don't like being involved in a relationship. It's really just that I love focusing on what I need to focus. You know, I have goals in life, right? And I need to achieve those goals. And in order to get there, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of hard work. And so, not that men are distraction, because they're not. They're a wonderful addition to your life. But I just don't even want to start over at this point. I mean, maybe later on, you know, and, and some, you know, down the road sometime, you know, maybe I'll want to be involved with someone. But right now, I'm just not interested, you know. And, I mean, it's really hard to move on from a breakup, especially when you've been involved with someone for, you know, for a long time. And for me, my experience in life has always been that. I've always been in long-term relationships. You know, I've had three significant relationships. And I really honestly want to tell you that the breakups haven't been the easiest. You know, have I gotten through it? Absolutely. And I'm going to tell you how. So the three gentlemen who I was involved with, 
they're they're very very different from one another um, my first real um, my very first relationship was my ex-husband you know I was married to my ex-husband I, I was with him for nine years I dated him four years and we were married five and you know it didn't work out to be honest with you he cheated on me you know he was unfaithful and I walked away from that marriage was it the hardest thing I ever had to do absolutely because he was my everything um, I felt like my world revolved around him like he was my my son my moon my stars and so that breakup, I, I feel that it was the hardest because we had so much. We had such a big life together. And it was hard for me to let that go. In addition to that, I felt like he was the love of my life. And so women, you know, we can all relate to that feeling. You know, there's this one person in this entire world who means the everything to us. And then one day, they're not there anymore. The traditions that you made, uh, the life that you built with this person is no longer there. You know, then you also have to break up with their family or with their friends or friends that you have in common because you don't want to hear about the, how they're doing and, and things like that. And so, I mean, it's, it was really hard. Um, it took a long time for me to get over my ex-husband. Was it impossible? Absolutely not. You know, in the moment, I felt like I was going to die, like I was never going to meet anyone ever again. But, you know what, life moved on. You know, my grandmother told me one time, just, you know, everything passes. This too shall pass, and it did. It took me a long time. It took me uh, to go to therapy, to get all that ugly, nasty gook out of my soul, because I was just feeling so terrible about everything. I was feeling terrible about life and myself and my self-esteem was low. I thought that it was my fault that he cheated on me. And you know what? It wasn't my fault. You know, that's a decision that he made. He knew he was married and the woman who he cheated with knew he was married. You know, I'm not here to like talk bad about him because he's a great human being. Did he make a mistake? Absolutely. He did make a mistake and, and no one is perfect, right? And I've been able to accept that. And if he ever needed me, I would still be there for him because he treated me like a queen, you know, all the years that we were together. And he comes from a really good family and, and I love his family. Um, the second breakup, I was with that gentleman for five years. And, you know, that breakup wasn't too bad because he and I both came into the relationship knowing what we wanted and what we didn't want. And honestly, I mean, he was the most genuine person I had ever met in, in terms of, you know, telling, you know, being honest about what he wanted in a relationship or, or what he didn't want in a relationship, what he expected and didn't expect. And that was very refreshing. This person is an alpha male. You know, and I to this day have so much respect for him. He never, from what I understand, and you know, we never know because we're not with them 24-7. But for as far as I know, he never cheated on me. He didn't lie to me. Um, but he just wasn't into having a long-term relationship. I think that this gentleman had everything going for himself, but he just was scared of commitment. And so he was very honest about that, and I had to respect it. You know, Jessica, I'm not looking to get married. I'm not looking to have children. You know, if you want to be with me, we could be cool. You know, we hang out on the weekends, and we go away every now and then. And you know what? Because I liked him so much, I accepted his conditions. But then, you know, at the same time, in hindsight, I think that it worked out for me too because... You know, I don't think that I wanted to marry him either. He also had children from a previous relationship. And I just, you know, I don't know. Like, men with children, just like, I don't know. For me, it just doesn't work. I, I just, that's a, I think that's a, I think that's a deal breaker for me. Um, I'm sorry if I offend anyone. You know, I just, for me, I just don't know that it would work out. Um... And how I got over that breakup was just, you know, like I said, it didn't hurt me too bad. So I was able to bounce back. Um, and bounce back, I don't mean bounce back to another man. I meant, like, bounce back to my normal routines and taking care of myself um, in no time. 
you know and as always I've always had very supportive people around me and I've always had my support team that has always shown up and shown out you know whenever I need my support team they are readily available just as I am for them the third one and this was the most recent breakup I was with this gentleman for almost 12 years and this one hurt a lot you know not as much as my marriage ending uh, that breakup but this last relationship hurt me quite a bit in different ways so I was with this gentleman for almost 12 years and he he's also a great guy he's very good looking he's intelligent he has a great job he's very independent um, he's well spoken he's well dressed I mean the man is he is he's gorgeous however he is also uh, all about himself, right? So, you know, throughout the years, I knew that, you know, there was something there that he wouldn't prioritize me as much. It wasn't a big deal to me because I always prioritize myself, you know. And as long as I know that I'm number one and I do what I need to do and I go as I please and I come as I please and I, and I reach my goals and fulfill my life, you know, like I said, the person that's in my life is in addition to my happiness is not the person who's going to flat out 1000% make me happy. Because if I depended on someone else to make me happy, I would definitely be in trouble. I would be single for the rest of my life. So because I have a great, uh, healthy life and I have a healthy self-esteem and I have a healthy relationship with my loved ones, um, it's not a problem. So, however, my ex, um, you know, he, he moved to another state and, and the long distance relationship, you know, it really didn't work for me. You know, we both, I think, lost interest in each other. But why it was hard for me was because I was so used to him being in my life. And I trusted him so much. You know, now it's like, oh, am I going to enjoy life the way I enjoyed it with him, you know? Or am I going to be able to trust the next man the way that I trust him? You know, is he, is the next, like he, I think that he set a really high standard <clears throat> for, for other men. And now when I contemplate dating again, you know, I hope that that's not a problem for me. So that breakup has been a little over a year. And how I've managed the loss and grief about that breakup is I've just been concentrating on work, you know, showing up to work, you know, working a full day, trying not to get distracted. You know, when I'm home, you know, I focus on being present, you know, and spending time with my loved ones here. I have refocused on what I wanted to do. You know, I've always loved fashion. I've always liked, you know, talking to people. And so, you know, I said, you know what? Let me start this, you know, my YouTube channel again. Because I need a... I think that that's my form of therapy. And that's my way of connecting to other people. You know what's interesting? When I'm at work, I don't think about anything. When I come home, everything comes to my mind everything and anything and so I think that my YouTube channel and connecting with you is a great form of therapy for me am I open to going to counseling again absolutely because I love counseling and like I said I love talking and who better than to talk to a professional right but you guys also serve as my therapy and you guys have really helped me through this breakup process because I started a couple of months ago maybe two months ago again maybe two months ago again and I've felt so much better I've gotten so much out of my system you know I was feeling really resentful oh this is what I was gonna say so that the last breakup I was in pain for two reasons one because I you know I generally didn't want to you know break up with you know that gentleman because you know I care for him um, however, I think that my biggest anger, the biggest reason for me to be more than hurt, like angry, was because I invested a lot of money 
into that relationship. You know, like I said, he relocated and the plan was for me to go and be with him in another state. And so I invested money into like, you know, building a life with him over there. And when it came down to making a decision that, you know, Jessica, you know, you're not happy. You don't really want to be with him. You don't really want to leave New York. I mean, I know that it's my doing and I take full responsibility for it. But I also, it makes me angry still that I spent money, time, energy on on a plan that didn't come to fruition and that, I, and that ultimately I just didn't want. So I think that I feel more upset about that. I don't know, has that ever happened to you? Did you get mad because of the loss of time and money and energy more than the person or did you really really feel the grief about losing the person and how did you handle it how did you deal with it you know how was your support system what did they say to you you know so yeah that was on my mind you know and that's that's what I was thinking about, you know, since, you know, that gentleman was like, oh, well, how long you've been broken up, you know, not that it was any of his business anyway. And I meant to say that earlier, you know, I don't like when men ask you out and when you say, oh, you're hesitant, they're like, oh, well, you know, oh, my God, you want to hear something funny? And we'll talk about rejection another time. But I remember when I was. And I probably mentioned it in that video too. When I was in junior high school, I remember this uh, this young kid. You know, he was I think he was in my grade, or he must, I think he was in my class or something. And I remember him telling me, "Oh, you're so pretty," you know. And then, you know, he always wanted to ask me out and stuff like that. And I was like, "No, no, no." I, I just didn't like him. And one day, I was walking in the hallway. A junior high school and he's like pss, pss, pss. oh you want to hear me man oh my god you want to you want to upset me is when men do that when they cat call i cannot stand that so anyway so he was like pss, 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 right when i was walking by and i ignored him because i knew it was him can i tell you you know what he said to me he was like well you ugly anyway oh my god i just bust out laughing i was like no this brother did not i was like he's so He's so um, hurt that I didn't pay attention to him, but that was funny. So I'm going to do the new question from our book. Let me see what's today's. Uh, who are your favorite writers? So, wow, that's interesting. Some of my favorite writers, I would say, are... Who are your favorite writers? Some of my favorite writers... Hands down, I want to I wanna say this. So, a couple of videos ago, I talked about Teresa Rodriguez, and she is my favorite writer in terms of, you know, that book that I was telling you about, Las Hijas de, de Juarez. However, Richard Wright is absolutely one of my favorite. Richard Wright, he's passed on, but he was a writer, um, and he focused on the honestly the racism that's what he spoke about you know he wrote black boy he wrote the native son and i remember when i was in i remember when i first started my undergrad studies his book was being sold in my school and i remember picking it up and he and the book was I, I believe black boy and he spoke about the racism that you know young african americans experienced in the south and the atrocities that they had to endure because of the racism and that was my and it's my favorite not because I like to read about racism is because it opened my eyes up to the racism outside of Latinos because and and this is another video that I have in in mind you know what it's like to be Latino in America I had experienced racism as a child I remember my mom and I, uh, we were in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. That's where I grew up. And my mom wanted to take me, I think she was taking me shopping or something. And we came across this store. I think the store was, I think the owners were Hasidic. And up to that point, I had never really experienced any racism. 
but it's real so anyway so my mom went to ring the bell because you had to ring a bell to get into the boutique and she rang the bell and they looked at us and they kept you know about their business so my mom rang again and they looked at us and they still wouldn't open the door to us and my mom i i just love her you know so that i wouldn't feel bad she was like oh they're probably too busy they probably have too many people in the store and she walked and we walked away but in that moment, I was young. I must have been like maybe seven or eight years old. But I remember how I felt. You know, how they didn't want to open the door to us. They saw us standing there. And there, was, there weren't a lot of people in that store. Come on, the door was like made out of glass. You could see inside. And I didn't, I didn't know that it was racism. But that's what it was. They didn't want Latinos to go into their store and buy their and purchase their clothes. Or purchase their merchandise. And that was the very first time that I felt discriminated against. And so when I read the book by Richard Wright, and I saw all the the ways, the different ways where African American boys uh, were treated, you know, by uh, by white people in the South, that really hurt my feelings. It was like reliving that experience at that little boutique in Williamsburg. You know, and I'm not saying that everyone is racist because they're not. I know a lot of, you know, great, you know, Jewish folks, you know, I have fam Jewish folks in my family. You know, I have, I know a lot of great white people, you know, that I owe a lot to because they've been nothing but wonderful, you know, in my life and my career and everything. You know, so I'm not saying that everyone is racist. I'm just saying that those were the experiences, you know, those were specific people that chose not to sell to us or so that's uh that's my question of the day what about you what is your favorite book and what is it about share with us in the comment section if you like this video like share and subscribe and you know tell your friends to come on over and also you can visit my spanish channel uh under my name jessica burgos and i'll leave the link down below so thanks again for hanging out with me today. Uh, Sunday, it is 3.05. I'm going to sign off. I'm going to start preparing dinner. And I'll see you tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your day.